I studied electronic engineering at university many years ago. Um, I've been hacking stuff probably since I was about 14. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about is Nano, which is a network applications node. Uh, this is a project that arose from the desire to have a very low cost platform on which you can develop simple internet based applications and make it compatible with Arduino. So the beginning of this project, I guess, was seeing that uh, a couple of guys had already produced a, an Ethernet shield for an Arduino that uses the low-cost microchip Ethernet controller. So I thought I'd have a go. So the first nanode actually began on a, on a breadboard. Um, where literally we've got the 80 mega microcontroller, some glue logic, and this space here is where the Ethernet controller used to go, which I've borrowed for another project. So I put this together one evening and actually managed to serve my first web page from this, this technology. So that then inspired me to go on and produce a small board that was roughly the same form factor as the Arduino, but had some enhancements to the hardware, uh, which made it accessible to the hobbyist and enthusiast who might want to build this from scratch by themselves. So um, the result was Nanode, the network applications node. Um, as you can see, I've got the four Arduino shield connectors, in the right, the right place, and uh, the use of um, only dual inline ICs and through hole components mean that anybody with basic soldering skills can make this for themselves. So, um, after building the first Ethernet version on breadboard, I put the project aside for about six months, and it was a colleague who's now associated with Patch Bay who back in March said, um, you fancy digging out the nanode again? And, and that inspired me to actually get it onto a board and, and go out and make some. So um, at the end of March, we had the first hardware prototypes on board. And uh, just in time for the Patch Bay Internet of Things hackathon, which was over the Friday, Saturday of the 8th and 9th of April in Soho. So this presentation was something that I put together for that particular event. Um, so uh, it's about a month since I read this, so I'm not quite sure what's coming next. So uh, I'll just blag my way through it, basically. OK, um, Nanode, uh, low-cost network applications node. It's a target platform so that people can develop web connectivity applications using low-cost microcontrollers. Because it was a Patch Bay gig, I had to emphasize the, the use of Patch Bay as a publisher subscriber model for data and uh, command control exchange. Um, I came up with a concept of a nano tweet, which is a, a very short message that can be sent through Patch Bay from one nano to another, um, getting it to control it. Uh, Low cost platform to build the Internet of Things. Um, open source um, hardware, open source firmware, so anybody can take my design files and, and make it. Uh, had to be Arduino compatible, so it opens it up to a wide audience. And target price under £20, which is something that we've been able to do very realistically. We're, we're offering these to Hackspace members for approximately £18. Um, so, uh, here's the, the first breadboard, um, a very quick list of the hardware there, about £10 in parts, um, designed for low cost and easy to build. And this was the first PCB version, so I produced 10 of these uh, at, because of short notice at vast personal expense. And these were then distributed to uh, my co-developers within the team 
and also people who I thought would be able to pick this up and run with it and basically divulge the, the nanode message. Um, right, another plug for Patch Bay. Um, it uses um, comma separated variable data format using the Patch Bay API. Uh, publisher subscriber model. It is suited to resource limited microcontrollers like the AT Mega 328. Um, you can get both sensor data and serial commands embedded into a Patch Bay feed. Um, and in a control application from one nano sending something up to patch bay and something coming back again or something happening, you're looking at about a five second latency, which for turning stuff on and off around the home, that is generally acceptable. Okay, uh, here's how it hangs together. We've got the publisher on the left hand side, which is connected to the patch bay API running within the cloud space. And then you've got one or more subscribers that can monitor that patch bay feed. And they then have an application connected to them, in this case, uh, an RGB lamp. So the publisher can send some sensor data or maybe something like uh, how much electricity a house is using at a particular time. And that's kicked off up to patch bay. And then um, the application, which is uh, an RGB ambient orb, that will change colour according to whatever that sensor data is. Okay, um, it uses the familiar Arduino IDE, um, incompatible with Arduino shields and on a similar size footprint to the Arduino. Uh, made it breadboard friendly, what we've done is we've brought all the I.O. pins along to one side of the board so that you can plug in one-sided complete with all the I.O. and power onto a breadboard. So it's really a platform that's designed to be easy for people to hack with um, without having to string too many wires from different connectors as you would if you were just using a standard Arduino. Okay, uh, wireless uh, uh, from the start, uh, we decided that we'd add that as a low-cost shield option, and in subsequent models, we've elected to use the uh, the RFM 12B wireless module that's distributed by G nodes, and that plugs straight in. So, with a nanode connected to the Ethernet and a G node shield, you've basically got a, a wireless to Ethernet bridge. Okay, um, you can plug in Arduino shields and they work straight off. Um, low cost two layer board, uh, designed on Eagle CAD, so again we're looking for the maximum accessibility to people from Hackspace environments. Um, Eagle CAD I think is undoubtedly the popular hobbyist or amateur CAD package and uh, many people are familiar with using it for, for uh, designing PCBs. So all of the design files are within Eagle CAD. Uh, easy to build for DIY construction, um, only basic soldering skills required. You can put them together in about two hours and um, as I say, through hole construction and DIL ICs. Um, that's it, that's the schematic. Basically, we've got the microcontroller, the Ethernet controller, and on the extreme right, a, uh, a mag jack, and uh, just a bit of glue logic and a couple of voltage regulators, and that completes the design. Uh, open source hardware. Um, the design files have been loaded up to Thingiverse. Um, there are step-by-step -step instructions to show you how to build it. Um, all the design files, PCB board files, um, the Gerbers, so anybody can take the, the build package from this, send off 
30 or 40 quid to a fabrication house and have 20 boards made. Um, so any hack space can just take, take the design and, and fly with it. Um, so, um, okay, uh, looking at some applications. Um, Nanode is uh, a platform looking for applications, uh, basically smart sensor networks, uh, networks consisting of master slaves. Um, you can have either wired or wireless. Uh, the one I mentioned earlier is uh, a wireless to Ethernet bridge. You can use it for remote control applications, energy monitoring, home automation, and anything to do with the Internet of Things. So, uh, basically, a very low cost platform to get you started with um, low cost um, Internet of Things. So, uh, that slide is just to illustrate the uh, publisher subscriber relationship. You have one nano publishing up to Patch Bay and you can have several nanodes subscribing to that feed and perhaps running completely separate applications. I sort of look at this as like um, back in the days of the Cold War where you'd have one agent that was dropping off um, messages and commands to a Dropbox and then sometime later uh, other agents came along and picked up those messages and acted upon them and neither party need know who the other one is. Um, so that's the simple pub-sub model. Okay, um, one of the other features that almost came to free is that um, uh, we ended up putting a, a tri-state buffer on the nanodes and we had two spare gates and so we decided to come up with this idea where lots of nanodes could be wired together on a serial bus um, using nothing more than like telephone extension cable, uh, and uh, you could have several slaves hanging off the one bus and being controlled by a master. So you can take a nano board and you don't fit the Ethernet controller and you don't fit the magjack and that will save you about four pounds of parts, but you can have these very simple Arduino-like slaves that you can do different applications with. So that's another way of stringing together the, uh, the nano. Um, on a wired system where you can use four core telephone cable to convey both communications and power. Power for the nanode and power possibly for the application that it's, it's driving. Um, as a wireless bridge, um, my somewhat simplistic graphics show a wireless shield plonked on top of the, the nanode. Um, well, uh, we've now achieved this with the, um, the Genodes breakout board. Um, so the current version of Nano uh, will be shipped with the capability of taking the Genodes module uh, as a direct plug-in. Um, and uh, more fun in pairs. So uh, that's just about the end. And then a word from our sponsors. Um, we, um, we're a very informal development team, um, a mixture of firmware and hardware guys, um, and then we've got the guys that are doing the beta testing, and of course uh, some of the original code from Tux Graphics back in 2007, um, on top of which their code, um, uh, the whole Nanode application, uh, resides. Um, so uh, that's basically Nanode in a nutshell. So since that time we have updated the PCBs. Uh, we have added a, um, an SPI memory chip to the underside of the board so we've got a lot more memory resource so we can do some, some real applications. And we've also added a, a little um, MAC address chip so that every nanode can have its own unique identity. 